Now I'm going to draw the upper part of that solid. I'm going to draw the underside like this. So there we go. That looks kind of like some sort of hat. Uh, and there is P. And what do we have? I think there was F1 that was there. You guys can correct it if I'm wrong. There's F2. There was F3. There might be some other ones there. And what we're going to do is, uh, and incidentally, there is going to be some resultant force that acts on this cutting face. So there is some total resultant force that acts on this uh, exposed part of the solid. So I'll say on this face. But we're not so much interested in that right now. And that force then would balance F1, F2, and F3. But we are, we are not going to focus on that for right now. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to surround P by a tiny amount of area. And I'm going to call that delta A. So delta A is equal to an infinitesimal area that surrounds P. So it's very, very small, but it's measured. We can make it whatever we want. And normally when we write that delta A, we're probably indicating it's going to be pretty small. So it's probably not one square meter. Um, it's going to be something that's of the order, you know, 10 to the minus something. But we don't have to really quantify that right now. All we know for right now is that it's going to be small. Now what I want to do, though, is to go ahead and say that there's going to be a resultant force that acts over that delta A. And I'm going to go ahead and call that delta F. So delta F is the total resultant force that acts over delta A. So let's go ahead and define that. Delta F, and that's a vector, that is equal to the total resultant force acting on delta A. All right, so it is force, so it has uh, uh, its pounds, newtons, what have you. Well, the next thing that we're going to do is, regardless of the direction of delta F, we can always break it down into two components, always. So this we can always break down into two components. One of them is going to be perpendicular to delta A. And I'm going to draw that like this, like so. So it's coming straight out of the face. So it is perpendicular. And then the other one is parallel to delta A. I'm going to draw that one like this. So delta F can be broken down no matter what into a component that is normal and one that is tangential. So let me go ahead and redraw that down here. So if delta F is coming out like so, then, and then uh, our delta A is like this, we can always break it down like this and like this. So there's our delta F, like so. And then we have the two components, and I'm going to label these. I'm going to call this delta N, and I'm going to call this one delta V capital V. So this one is perpendicular to our area, delta A, and delta V then is parallel to delta A. So the total resultant force then we're going to break down into one that is normal and one that is tangential. So let's write that here. That is normal. That's why I used N. And parallel to, I didn't use P in this case because V, remember, you've used that in your statics class. That's actually the symbol for shear, and that's going to have a meaning for us shortly. And that is the one that is going to be parallel. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is actually uh, introduce our first definitions. So here they go. So we are going to define. First is sigma. There it is. And it is a scalar for right now. So it's actually a more complicated mathematical and physical symbol than that. But for right now, we're going to view it as a scalar for this particular example. And that has a, a name of the normal stress. 
normal because it's normal or perpendicular to delta A. So it's the perpendicular one. And the way that we get that is we take the magnitude of delta N, and that's just a number, and then we divide it by delta A, and then we take the limit as delta A tends to zero. So the normal stress is the ratio of force divided by area. So we're going to box that up. I'm going to draw it like this, like so. And we are going to put next to it, just like we've been doing, we want to memorize that one. Memorize at least the concept. So sigma is normal stress, and it is the total normal force resultant divided by the element of area. So this is a force per area sort of quantity. So in a way, it's similar to pressure, what you learned in your statics class. So force per area. Now, you've learned earlier on in your careers that there, are, um, there is a difference between units and dimensions. Let's take a little bit of a pause here and remind ourselves of that. So let's write units versus dimensions. So remember, uh, I think you've got this in your physics class. I'm not quite sure. But there are seven of these. Seven of these that we care about. There is mass, length, temperature, time. And by far, those are the engineering properties. Those are the engineering dimensions that we care a lot about. There's also luminous intensity. I don't feel like writing that out. There is charge from our friends in double E. And then there's basically quantity. So that's the mole. So those three are from what, physics? Uh, our friends in double E or physics as well. And quantity, that's our buddies in chemistry. And these are typically engineering. So mass, length, temperature, and time. Now in our class, Rarely are we going to be using time per se like you would use it in a dynamics class, but it's embedded inside of the mg that we get for force. So we're going to do the following. When we write things out, and I would say force per area, when we think about force, we think, okay, it's mass times acceleration, and acceleration is length per time squared. So if I were to say, what are the dimensions of force, we would say mass, we use capital M, then a length, and then divided by time squared. Well, in my way of thinking, in my economy, uh, this takes too much time. So too much time. So we are going to make force an honorary dimension, just for our class. So just... For us, we're going to let force, or F, be an honorary dimension. What that means is we don't say this to anybody outside the class because it would be embarrassing because it's not one of the seven. It's mass length per time squared. And so that would formally be the appropriate thing to do, but we're not. We're going to say, oh, it's F. And what that allows us to do then is say that the dimensions of normal stress is force per area, but area is not a dimension. Length is, so we would say force per length squared. So we will say then that the dimensions of normal stress are force per length squared. Now the units, on the other hand, are the specific system that you're using. So units would be, for example, pounds per square inch. So PSI. In SI, it would be something like newtons per square meter, or the Pascal. So those would be the dimensions of force upstairs and then the length downstairs. And these are the two common ones that we typically use for these particular uh, measures. All right, sigma, normal stress, force per length squared. Our second definition then is going to be tau. So that is the Greek 
letter T A U. And I suppose I should have said that this, uh, that is our si uh, symbol for sigma. Incidentally, lead is lowercase, lowercase sigma. Remember, uppercase, it looks like that. It's the summation sign. That would be the upper case in the Greek alphabet. So sigma is the lowercase sigma when we were, if we were using some sort of software, it's the lowercase sigma. So tau, also I think lowercase, uh, tau then is going to be equal to what is known as the shear stress. And we're going to do something very similar. But since we know what the drill is, that is actually the limit as delta A goes to zero, same idea, and we're gonna take the magnitude of that component of the parallel force to our delta A and divide it then by the area that looks like this. So there we go, we've got a tau that is shear stress, and it's just gonna be the second component that we get. So one is normal, it is perpendicular to the surface, and the other one is kind of sliding. So you could put your hand on a table and slide it along, that's the direction that the shear stress would take. The normal, again, you're pushing your hand down and, you know, mashing in or pulling out if you glue it, let's say, for example. And tau also has the dimensions of force per length squared as well. All right, so in 11 and a half minutes through this video, we've introduced our first two terms that we're going to be using all the time in this class. So we've got sigma and tau. Those are our two big parameters, normal and shear stress. And when we come back for our next lecture, then we'll start to apply this, talk a little bit more about this, about some of the sign conventions and so on. But for now, again, we're only having three parts to this first lecture. That's because there was the introductory set. And then uh, from, the, from this time on, most of these are gonna be about 12, 12 and a half minutes, and there will be four. But just for today, you're lucky because we are now finished with part C, which means we're done with lecture one. See you next time.